Good morning, Architecture One. Uh, today I want to talk about wall structures. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I hope this uh, recording will help you. Uh, if it doesn't, of course, I'll help you in class. Just let me know. But uh, this is, uh, you know, starting to get toward a time where I have some students that are moving ahead really quickly and some students that are still trying to figure things out, which is perfectly okay. Uh, everybody learns at a different pace. It doesn't mean anything. But um, this is so that some kids can uh, work ahead, and then, of course, some kids may need to uh, reference and come back later and review some of the same stuff again. So anyway, this is for your wall structures, and this comes right after the T-type foundation. Once you finish the T-type foundation, you will be working on the wall structures. So let's get down to business. And uh, of course, wall structures, we're not talking about the wall that is in the background here, the really heavy duty stone, triple layered uh, uh, fortification. Uh, what we are talking about is simply our, uh, the walls that we use to build our buildings that are around you every day, your home, this uh, building that you're in, things like that, okay? Um, we have terms, there's about three and a half pages of terms. Now, it sounds like a lot, um, but of course, look at the terms. You don't have to write down every single word that I wrote. Um, if I ever check your notes, I'm not going to check for that. Uh, write it to where you can understand it if it uh, means writing half as much as I've written here or even less, as long as you can understand what it means. Um, but I'm just going to go down the list and kind of go over these. I'm not even going to read word for word what I have on the screen. But uh, timber construction refers to the method and the material that we use to build buildings with. Um, timber construction means that the framing of the building is made of wood. Um, your house is typically made of wood. Uh, every now and then they may use what's called steel frame construction. Okay, we have steel frame construction right after that. Um, steel frame construction is referring, again, to the material used to construct and support walls. And um, they, they basically look about the same size as uh, your regular wooden framing members, but they are a uh, light gauge steel. And once they're, they're completely constructed and uh, erected, they're uh, very strong, very durable. Um, and they last a long time. Uh, not that wood walls do not. Um, wood walls last a very long time as well. We'll get more into the pros and cons of steel frame versus timber construction at a later date. Um, nominal versus actual size is something you always have to keep in mind. Um, but nominal means in name only. And in the construction industry, it is used to describe sizes of all kinds of materials. Typically, what you're going to run across here in this class is when we're talking about our lumber framing material. A 2 by 4 does not actually measure 2 inches by 4 inches. It actually measures 1 and a half inches by uh, 3 and a half inches. And, of course, as you go up in size, that, um, that, uh, that changes a little bit. Um, but uh, just remember that, and, and I'll show you a chart, and I might even put one on the end of this uh, presentation, uh, but a chart that kind of shows you the actual sizes of your lumber, and it's important to know that because a lot of your design is going to be based on those accurate measurements. So <clears throat> remember that 2x4 is just an easy way to say 1.5 inches by 3.5 inches. Which one would you rather say? Okay, so anyway, when someone says 2 by 4 we know exactly what they're talking about. Insulation is a material that is placed between wall studs uh, to lessen the effects of heat transfer. Uh, in other words, it's that pink stuff that's inside your walls and, and it uh, you know, helps keep things cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Let's yeah, see if we can get this screen to progress here. Oh, I guess if I hit the space bar, that would help. Um, finish. Finish is going to be the exterior most or the interior most uh, material of any structural component that will be visible to the occupants or to the public. Uh, that consists of the bricks you see on the outside of your home or a building to the what we call drywall on the inside of your building. Uh, the drywall goes by several different names. 
Uh, but that's the stuff that's real chalky, and you uh, you kind of hang your pictures on it and your posters and stuff like that. Uh, but that those are finishes, exterior and interior finishes. Gymsum Wallboard is a wall material consisting of calcium sulfate dihydrate sandwiched between two layers of thick paper. Uh, this is the one that goes by several different names. Sheetrock, drywall, plasterboard. There's even a couple of other ones that you might even hear um, in, in the future as you uh, stay in the architectural or construction industry. Uh, but typically the drywall is painted over with latex paint. Um, and uh, next is core boundary. Now the core of the wall is the structural members. You know, the wood framing or the metal framing. That's what actually holds the wall up. The bricks on the outside do not hold the wall up. Uh, even though they, they look like they might, they do not. Um, but the core boundary refers to uh, what side of that wall frame are you on. It's like an invisible imaginary line. Uh, you have the exterior boundary and you have the interior boundary. And it's just basically taking that framing system and um, indicating, you know, like what side of that framing system is going to receive certain material applications. Um, you won't really, we won't really use it a lot this year, but we'll use it a lot more next year. Um, stud is the vertical member of a wall's core structure, often consisting of a 2x4 piece of lumber. And remember, 2x4 is just in name only. Seal plate, uh, I believe you probably had this one before, but uh, seal plate or sole plate is that bottom horizontal member on the wall frame. Uh, top plate is the top horizontal member of, a, of the core structure, um, also of 2x4. A double top plate just means two top plates. Uh, header, header is a horizontal thickened structural member placed above wall openings, uh, such as windows and doors, to compensate uh, for the removed vertical structural members. Okay, and uh, you'll see more of how that is applied a bit later. Seal is the lowermost member of any wall opening, such as a window or pass-through. Okay, so if it's a window, it's just called a window seal. Um, just about any lower member of a framing or framing construction is, is considered a seal. Um, a trimmer or a jack is a vertical member of a wall opening installed to support the header. A king stud is the outermost vertical member of a wall opening that spans from the top plate to the sole plate. Uh, cripple, a vertical wall member that extends from the sole plate up to a window or wall opening seal. Used to support the opening structure. Also placed above headers and add vertical support between the top of the header and the top plate. Descriptive geometry, okay, this is a colloquial set of terms used in the construction industry to identify structural relationships between multiple components. And you will hear all sorts of, of these colloquial terms, um, and a lot of those terms have multiple meanings. And sometimes um, the meaning has multiple terms. So um, it, it's hard to get used to, um, but, you know, we, of course, will start here in class with, with that. So listen very carefully as I talk about certain things, <clears throat> and um, so you can kind of make note of what it is that we're calling them and kind of make those relationships. Um, but uh, anyway, describing geometry, uh, is, there's a lot to that, so you have to kind of learn as you go and and as you practice, you'll learn more how to describe geometry using a lot of these terms. This is a basic, basic residential wall section. And this is what you're going to draw. Okay, everyone's going to draw this. Um, and uh, draw it just like I have here. Now, only thing I don't have are necessarily are dimensions like you're used to seeing. Uh, my dimensions are actually mentioned inside of the uh, annotation so airspace one inch sheathing three quarter inch osb which osb stands for oriented stranded board uh, then of course we have the vapor retarder there is no measurement to that because it is paper thin uh, we have the insulation which there's no measurement to that either because it is placed between the uh, framing members the vertical framing members and uh, that is what helps keep things cool in the summer, warm in the winter. Uh, this is 
particular insulation, I put a note out to the side. It says R14, and that is its heat resistance value. You will learn more about that in uh, in you know days to come, um, or actually probably not until next year to be honest with you. Uh, but it's you need to know what it is for now. Uh, then of course I've got drywall one half of an inch. Um, uh, and you know again no dimensions just put it right there in the annotation common brick i didn't put an annotation on that common brick comes in several different sizes um i believe i drew this one just go ahead and draw it at uh four inches okay four inches wide this way okay like that and then uh, a little bit narrower maybe three and a half vertically Okay, to, uh, yeah, just make a good looking brick. All right, so the size on the brick isn't necessarily important, um, not in this, in this application. So that is what you're going to be drawing. And I'm not going to have a video showing you how. Okay, just take it now. That is your assignment is to draw that, that wall member or that wall, uh, what they call it, darn it, wall section. Okay, uh, this is wall framing detail with a door opening. This showing you all the different parts. You need to study this part, these parts, know what they're called, be able to label them on a test. Okay, so study over them, understand where they're located, kind of visualize it and see what it is that they actually do. How they, what is their performance? What is their function? And it's very easy to see the function from, from just looking at it. Uh, this is another wall framing detail with door and window opening to kind of give you a look at that. Now, of course, there's many, many different ways to frame a wall, um, and this is just one of them. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind, too. This is a T connection, and this is uh, how we tie uh, walls together, both at the corners and um, perpendicular intersections. Uh, where walls, where maybe the interior walls join up with the exterior walls. And you see that's why we have that double top plate, because that helps us tie uh, these walls together by you know, creating like an overlap. Uh, corners and T-connection, this is just a picture of the corner, um, so that you can see that, the corner, how it's tied together. Uh, the uh, this one was on the previous slide and of course they show some really nice detailed instructions on how that actually works right there so study that very carefully and steel framing and timber framing this is you know basically just looking at the difference here steel framing on the left timber framing on the right very simple uh, you have different uh, different wall structures uh, varying um, all kinds of different wall structures I really don't even know how many there are so many different types um, and a lot of times it's based on location and environment and things like that uh, some walls have to be more insulated than other walls but kind of just take a look at these you don't have to remember any of this um, just kind of look at some of the names and just kind of have those in mind um, and uh, we'll get more into some of those a bit later. This is a typical Texas wall profile. This is what you'll mostly be working with in this class. All right. And of course, you have your exterior finish, your house wrap, which is kind of a, that paper thin, that vapor retarder material that goes between the exterior finish and the sheathing, which is right here. And, there I've got it uh, indicated right there um, then of course we have the insulation this is stuff that keeps you warm and cool or helps keep you warm and cool it kind of turns your house into a like a like an ice chest a cooler um, then of course you've got the interior drywall and uh, the core structure this is the core structure right here that is what holds the wall together. That's what the wall is all about right there. Everything else is pretty much either for looks or for, um, you know, helping you stay uh, in a nice indoor climate. And that is it, guys. Um, just study this very carefully. And th there is a, uh, 
not just this recording of the presentation, but there's also the presentation by itself so that you can spend some time on some of those frames and even enlarge the fic pictures if you want to or whatever it is you feel like doing. That's your material there. All right, so uh, good day and good luck.